Hi class, this lecture starts with chapter 10 talking about parametric equations and polar coordinates. We're going to start in section 10.1 talking about curves defined by parametric equations. All right, so I want to start this um, lecture with kind of an example, okay, to illustrate what exactly is a parametric equation. So imagine you have this particle, okay, and it's going to move along the curve C shown here in figure one. So this particle is only going to move uh, in the XY plane. Okay, and these arrows indicate um, how the particle is moving. Okay, so it's following this type of path right here. Okay, so looking at this, you can see that it's impossible to describe this curve C by an equation of the form y is equal to f of x. All right, obviously this, this curve fails the um, vertical line test, so the curve itself is not a function. Okay, but notice here I'm going to pick a point on the curve. All right, this x comma y point on the curve. And I'm going to denote it as being equal to this f of t comma g of t. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the x, x variable and define it as a function. So the value that the particle is um, at x in this plane is going to be defined by f of t. And the y value that this particle is on this curve is going to be defined by g of t. Okay, so what I mean by this is, but the x and y coordinates of the particles are function of some time variable. Okay, so what I mean by time is, you know, in the first second, the particle might be here, then after two seconds, the particle might be here because it's moving, right? And, it, and it's going further as time goes on. Okay, so we can write x as being equal to f of t and y is equal to g of t. All right, such a pair of equations often convenient way for describing a curve and gives rise to the following definition that we have. Okay, suppose that, and this is the definition, suppose that x and y are both given as functions of a third variable t. And it doesn't have to be t, it can be some other variable, all right? But x and y are both defined as some by some other variable t, and this variable t is going to be called a parameter, by these equations. x is equal to f of t, and, g, and y is equal to g of t. These are called parametric equations. Okay, each value of t then determines the point x, y, which we can plot in the coordinate plane. Okay, so going back at time, you know, 1, here's where the particle is, all right? So plugging in 1 into these function produces this. At time 2, it produces this point, and so on. So um, each value of t determines the point x, y, as I said. We can plot those in the coordinate plane. As t varies, this point x, comma y, which is now a function of t, and a function or where x and y are both functions of t, so f of t and g of t, these vary and traces out the curve C. This is what we call this resulting curve is now a parametric curve. The parameter t does not necessarily represent time, and in fact, we can use the letter other than t for the parameter. But in this class, uh, there's going to be many applications of parametric curves where t does denote time, and therefore we can interpret. The, the point x, y is equal to f of t and g of t as the position of a particle at time t. All right, let's just do a, a, another example of this, okay? So let's sketch and identify the curve defined by these two parametric equations, okay? So I've got the x-coordinate uh, of this curve is denoted by x squared minus 2t, or excuse me, x is equal to t squared minus 2t, my apologies, and y is equal to t plus 1. Okay, so how are we going to sketch this curve here for this? Well, to do this, each value of t gives a point on the curve as shown in this following table. So what you're going to do is you're going to pick values of t. So we'll start with some negatives, negative 2, negative 1, 0, and then include 0, and then some positives, 1, 2, 3, 4. And you're going to take these t values, and you're going to plug them into this uh, equation to get the x values. So like for example when you plug in negative 2. Negative 2 squared is 4 minus 2 times negative 2 becomes positive 4. 4 plus 4 gets me 8. That's the x value. To get the corresponding y value just plug in negative 2 into the into this equation for y. You get negative 2 plus 1 gets me negative 1 and so on. You can keep going for all these. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take these x, y pairs and plot them as ordered pairs. That's all you have to do. All right, so for instance, what we're seeing here, as I was explaining, when t is equal to 0, then x is equal to 0, and y is equal to 1, and so on. Okay, so the corresponding point when t is equal to 0 is the point 0, comma 1 on the curve. And when you plot the points, you can see here are the corresponding x, y 
points on the graph. Okay, so in figure two, we plot these points x, y determined by several values of the parameter, and we can join them to produce this nice smooth curve like this. All right, so a particle who moves, whose position is given by the parametric equation, moves along the curve in the direction of the arrows as t increases. So like when t was equal to negative 2, then as t increases to negative 1, to 0, to 1, to 2, to 3, to 4. So notice the arrows indicate the direction that this particle is moving. Okay, that's important. So notice that the consecutive points marked on the curve appear at equal time intervals. Okay. Like, let me go back. Here's negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. The t's have negative intervals, or, or have, have equivalent intervals, or equal intervals, excuse me. Okay, so notice that the consecutive points marked on the curve appear at equal time intervals, but not at equal distances. Okay, that is because the particle slows down at some point, like when it's approaching that curve, and then speeds up as t increases. So that's okay. So it appears from figure two that the curve traced out by the particle may be a parabola, like it's a parabola tilted on its side. All right, so this can be confirmed actually by eliminating the parameter t as, as, as follows. So when you look back here, okay, these are our equations, right, for the, the parametric equations. We have x is equal to t squared minus 2t, and the other one is y is equal to t plus 1. What I want to do is I want to somehow write this, all right, to eliminate the t variable, to eliminate the uh, parameter. All right, so how would we do that? All right, we obtained this t is equal to uh, y minus 1 because if you remember, y was equal to t plus 1. So all we're doing is we're moving, moving the 1 over to get t by itself, okay? This is from that second equation. And then once we're able to get t by itself, we're going to substitute it into the first equation. Okay, so this was our first equation. x is equal to t squared minus 2t. Well, hey, I know what t is equal to. It's equal to y minus 1. So I'm going to take that and plug that in for t. And you're just going to get this, all right? x is equal to y squared minus 4y plus 3, which is exactly uh, what we're seeing on the, on the graph. And so the curve represented by these given parametric equations is just that parabola, x is equal to y squared minus 4y plus 3. So you can eliminate the parameters, all right, and get the equation of just the curve if, if, it's, if it's possible to do so. All right, so no restrictions was replaced on the parameter t in this first example, so we assume that t can be any real numbers. All right, but obviously sometimes uh, we restrict t to lie in a finite interval. For instance, if we just look at the parametric curve, that same one, that x is equal to t squared minus 2t and y is equal to t plus 1. If we just look at, at a, from the time interval from 0 to 4, you see in the figure here. All right, so uh, the part of the parabola from example 1 that starts at point 0, 1, that's when time is equal to 0, and it ends at point 8, 5, when time is equal to 4. Okay, so this is just when you look at the, the parameters restricted. You can still draw the arrow indicating where it starts and where it's going. So the arrowhead indicates the direction in which the curve is traced as t increases from 0 to 4, as I said. In general, the curve with, with uh, parametric equations, x is equal to f of t and y is equal to g of t, from some interval from a to b, we have the initial point, f of a, g of a, and then we call the ending point the terminal point, f of b, g of b. All right, let's do one last quick example, uh, and it goes like this. What curve is represented by the following parametric equations? So we have x is equal to cosine of t and y is equal to sine of t. And we're just looking from 0 to 2 pi, okay? So from one, basically one rotation around the uh, unit circle here. <clears throat> All right, so first of all, what, is the, what does the curve of this look like? Okay, what will it look like? Well, if we plot points, like if you just plug in the values like 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi, you're going to notice we have a circle, okay? And you can actually confirm this impression by eliminating t. But so how would we do that? How would we eliminate t here? Well, you just have to recognize um, a very simple trigonometric identity that if you take cosine squared of t plus sine squared of t, what does that have to equal? Well, that has to equal 1. Well, what is cosine squared of t? Well, that's just x squared. 
What is sine squared of t? Hey, that's just y squared. So you just have this x squared plus y squared is, is equal to 1. What is that? That's a circle with center 0, 0 and radius 1. Okay, so thus the point x, y moves on the unit circle. You're going to see that it's going to move counterclockwise along this unit circle x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. All right, so notice that in the example, the parameter t can be interpreted as the angle and radians shown in this figure here. So if you had t is equal to 0, like I was saying, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi, this, this particle, if it was going to move along the circle, would just move like this. All right, class, that was a quick introduction to um, parametric equations, and we'll move on in the, in the coming sections to talk about the calculus related to uh, parametric equations.